output of your Perlin field game as you're developing it. So whenever you want to deploy your project and test if your code actually works the way you intended it to, you need to open up a web browser and verify that the change persisted. Um, additionally, as you're programming, it has no knowledge of the built-in Perlin field utilities. Um, so this like two here is just showing that it has built-in knowledge of JavaScript, but it doesn't know the Perlin field specific library. And also, as you're developing games, it doesn't have a live output of any of your console logs or console errors, um, which is something that's super helpful to me throughout development. I really like to see what the V8 engine is outputting so I can verify that things are in the correct state throughout development. So initially, this project was just to design uh, a simple Perlinch Peel editor with these changes. So my goals were to have a live console output of your game as you're developing it, I wanted to have uh, knowledge of all of the Perlinch Peel library functions and suggest them to the user as they were programming. And I also wanted to have that live debug so that you could see what your you know, game was printing, all of the logic behind the scenes as you were developing your application. So to get started, I looked at some existing frameworks that are easily extendable. Um, I'm sure many of you have worked with um, GitHub's Atom program, which is an open source editor which means all the code is available for you to just go look through and edit to your needs. Um, so that was a potential choice for me. I didn't necessarily want to write the whole framework from scratch. Um, I wanted something that I could build upon and just make the specific changes to make it work with Perl and Spiel. Um, so that was one option. Another option that I explored was Visual Studio Code, which has a whole plugin system that basically Visual Studio Code says, we don't know what you're gonna to wanna to use our application for specifically, so we have this really extensive library that's well documented so you can make your own specific modules and just fit them right in. Um, and looking at both of these solutions, they all have their pros and cons, and um, I came to a realization that they're both built on top of Node.js and they're using the Electron's um, like library. And what this means is that they're actually native web applications that are just deployed to a computer. That's essentially what Electron does. You just feed it uh, HTML files, and it has its own version of uh, Chromium built in. So much like a web browser that interprets JavaScript and HTML, Electron does the same. It just maps all of the functionality to be a native application. So you have a native window, um, and Node.js, which is integrated to Electron, provides the user with access to like the file system, the ability to spawn processes, and um, do a lot more under the hood, um, more like more operating system level programming. So it, it gives you uh, another level of uh, flexibility that traditional web applications don't provide. So I realized that I could simply make a uh, web tool that let you program in Perlin Spiel. Perlin Spiel is a game engine that is deployed to the web. There are many web frameworks that allow you to do code editing or file browsing. And I could simply make a toolkit that let you arrange everything nicely in a grid. So what I did is I looked back at um, GitHub's Atom and Visual Studio Code, and these purple boxes here are sections of functionality that I found in each of the applications. So you can see that Atom has a file tree, as does Visual Studio Code. Um, they both have code editors. Atom has this nice tab bar at the top, and Visual Studio Code has some plugin functionality on the side and a console at the bottom, so you can see what you're programming. And I realized that this was all functionality that I wanted to have in my application. And since I've already decided to use Electron, all I needed to do was find web libraries that allowed you to do this functionality and then adapt it to work in my uh, framework. So this is a, just a picture of the application overall from a whole. So I've requested to make a grid that is five columns wide and five rows tall. And each one of those um, squares is a cell and you can put a unique piece of functionality inside one of those cells. So as I was mentioning before, I wanted to say have a code editor or a file viewer or a tab bar. Any one of those pieces of functionality, once it is developed, is completely encapsulated. So I can say put the file bar at the top, say column 3.1, uh, put the code editor in 3.3, something like that. And you can customize the grid to be uh, as big or as small as you want, and it's also asymmetric. So if you want to have like a three column grid with two rows only in the center column, that's easily achievable. So going into making my Perlin Spiel specific application, I thought that the widgets that I would target developing were a code editor, like I mentioned before, a file tree, and a live output. And 
I just needed to find the libraries that would allow me to um, add these pieces of functionality to my application. So I settled on CodeMirror for my code editor. It's an open source library that lets you edit code on the web. It's what a lot of web pages that have like code snippets built into them will use in the back end to display that code, um, which means it also has like very slight lexing. It will it'll show you syntactically um, different colored uh, grammar for the language that you choose to edit. So it already had some functionality that I thought would be useful built in. Um, and it's open source, so I could modify it to fit my specific needs. Um, for the file tree widget, I found a library called Fancy Tree, which essentially generates a tree structure from a JSON object, um, and the sort of recursive layers of the object represent different hierarchical file levels. Um, so using Node.js's built-in file viewer, I could point it to a directory on the system and then sort of recursively check subdirectories and files to build this JSON object and then easily pass it to Fancy Tree. So it, it just worked very well with my system. Um, and the web page widget that I chose to make was an enhanced iframe that Electron provides natively. You've already seen this picture before because it, it's just provided natively. You just essentially point um, a web view to a location on the web or a local HTML file and Electron's <coughs> local V8 instance will just render that page as if it was a web page out on the web. So using those three widgets, I could simply request that my library create a three by one grid and then fit the functionality into it. So this is actually um, an example of my framework. Like this is not a mocked up image that I've made. It's really just that simple. I pointed the code editor to be the leftmost column, the file viewer to be the center column, and the live output to be the right column. And this is actually like completely dynamic. So every time you write code or modify code and save it, the grid will update. So I sort of achieved that piece of functionality that I wanted. And um, it's kind of hard to see, but the gray highlighted uh, game.js file is what is open. So as you, you know, modify uh, or select different items in your file viewer, it will open them on the side. And that's all functionality that I documented um, through JS docs that you could potentially use in an application that you made. Um, so I wasn't gonna leave the project at just that, so I adapted it to be more freeform. Um, through Professor Moriarty's guidance, we realized that it didn't necessarily need to target Perlinspiel as a whole. It's already an agnostic framework that just creates a grid that lets a user put content in different cells. So we could have new widgets that users create. Um, so just going like a little bit further, uh, this is the Perlinspiel editor with some special like custom widgets that I've made. You can see that it has the Perlinspiel documentation. Um, it has a IntelliSense widget that tells you what specifically uh, you can type in Perlinspiel. So it, like, it has all the library functionality too, and as you're typing, it will suggest things. Um, and this is just like a little bit of a breakdown of that. So I have yeah, like the IntelliSense code editor, all that, and they're all different widgets. So like every unique piece of color is a specific widget, and in the background, it has that grid structure that I showed earlier in the green and the red. Um, so throughout development of this application, there were only six widgets that I made that are super freeform. So I have the code editor, the file viewer, the uh, live output. This sort of gray one in the middle is a development console, so it has an input field at the bottom, and you can map standard in or standard out of any process spawned through Node.js to it, and it will just let you send data to standard in and print the data from standard out right to it. Um, the second to last one is a four by four matrix viewer, which I thought was super cool. Um, so you can view 3D transformation matrices with that. And the all black column is a WebGL enabled canvas. Um, so that works really well with um, the transform viewer because you can view a 3D transform and modify it in real time and see the output on the canvas, so that's pretty cool. Um, this library is completely open source on GitHub. Um, it's my username, bhsaucetech slash egad, which is a fun name for the library. Um, <laughs> Electron group the line documents. And you can see that I have the JS docs documentation for um, the whole library. I, I spent a lot of time meticulously documenting this as I was going with the hope that it would be adapted and all of that documentation is also on GitHub. So if there's say a widget for an application that you wanna build that isn't in the library, this is all open source, you can extend it, 
Um, and since it's a public work on GitHub, licensed by MIT, you could you know submit those pull request changes to me, and if it's a cool widget, you could potentially be added to the library as a whole. Um, this here is a very, very short one minute video with no sound, where in real time, it took me three minutes to make a Perlin Spiel editor. Yes, that is kind of what I was targeting initially, so it, I know it's a, it's a little bit biased because that's kind of what it was designed for as a whole, but this is just me showing that very, very simply, you can create a 2 by 2 grid to populate it with the content you want, and there you go, you have a Perlin Spiel instance with the code on the side, and as you edit it in real time, it will live update the results. Um, I think that's pretty much it. There you go. Um, and these are just two potential uh, other applications. So this uh, left one is a different language. So I wrote like a, like a language file um, for my specific game engine, and it's lexing that for me and suggesting the specific library functions and calls of my language, which isn't JavaScript. And on the right, I have the sort of transformation viewer with a WebGL <coughs> canvas showing that you can write WebGL code and modify the matrices in space. Um, I think that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> So, one thing that really emerged from this MQP project as a whole was, rather than deciding to extend someone else's work, this was an opportunity where I'm in school and I have the time to really learn something new. So I took this as an opportunity to learn um, Node ES, or, sorry, JavaScript ES6, which is sort of like one of the newer versions of JavaScript, which has a lot more functionality, like async await, it doesn't just have var anymore, like you have let and const. Um, it was just something that I didn't know, and I know is really highly sought after out in the workplace. Now I have no JS experience and Electron experience, and I know that lots of companies are looking for that. So it, it was really just a learning experience for me, where I had the time and guidance, so I decided to make my own rather than add features to something that was pre-existing. Yes? Imagine one of the um, interfaces a user would want to be able to resize the grid yeah. dynamically, uh, collapse them, hide them. Yep. Does that does support that? Yes, so um, you can't dock them so that they're fully closed because I was having problems where the drags for them would overlap. But um, let's see if I can go back to the green screen, so, or the screen too. Um, these vertical gray bars are automatically generated by the framework and they will resize any content relative to them. So they have CSS styling too, so if you hover over them, they'll light up and the cursor will tra uh, transition to be the left and right arrow that sort of indicates that you can drag it. Um, and it lets you collapse it to 5% and 5%, and that's just natively supported. Um, it will override CSS of existing windows to, to force it to be the correct size. Imagine another plugin you'd want is a debugger. Uh, yeah, so since this is built on um, Chromium and V8, you actually have access to the native debug tools. Um, and you know, Chromium's pretty great. It, it's very optimized and um, like the traditional, uh, let's see, I have a picture of it here. The sort of traditional output of a Chromium web page that you would see in say Google Chrome or Opera is actually completely available to you and you can map it to any of the web views that are on the screen or just the application as a whole since it is essentially a web page that is running natively. So that's actually built in already as well. Cool. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so another, another one I like. You got everything I've asked for. Uh, uh, a profiler. So performance profiler? Yes, that is something that um, I don't have built in, but ah, I've got yeah, something. You got one. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's it's Profiler in the Chromium. Oh, there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, it's just switched to Chromium. So, yeah, right. Does anyone have any other questions at all? Cool, thank you so much for your time.